Hi, it's Lisa from Pint Size World. Thanks for joining me today. I'm going to share with you how I made my tiny pottery wheel by using my 3D resin printer. It's a really fun process, so let's get started. So I used my Shaper 3D app on my iPad to design the wheel, and then I had dropped each piece into my longer orange tin slicer program that comes with the 3D printer. I had to arrange it, size it, add the supports, and then slice it, which just puts it into layers so that the printer can print. Then I pulled out the disc, inserted it into my printer. Turned my printer on. Found the file. And now I need to prep my printer. So I remove the cover. Slip on some gloves, safety first. Also wear a respirator and goggles. And then got out my resin. I have some white resin here. Give it a good shake because it tends to settle. Poured in just enough, maybe a little bit more than I think I need, but not too much. You don't want to fill it all the way up because it will overflow. Replace the cover and press print. And that print took two hours and 15 minutes. And here it is printing. And here I have a bucket of denatured alcohol. You can also use isopropyl alcohol for rinsing. You need to rinse your prints after they're printed just to get all the excess resin off. And I just pop the prints off with a little paint scraper and pop them right into that alcohol and give them a nice shake. I like that little pickle bucket. You can find that in the description below if you want to buy one yourself. And then I pulled each one out and gave it a little inspection just to make sure it went well. And I have this really cool bucket that my friend gave me. It has UV LEDs all the way around it and a little spinner at the bottom. And I just pop it in there for about 10 minutes. And now the resin is cured and it's safe to be held with my hands without gloves. So then I have to remove all the supports and that kind of takes forever. But I love these little pliers just to get that done a little bit faster. Much, much, much later. And then here we have all the parts with all the supports removed. And I noticed that some of them didn't fit real well together, but look at that detail. It gets the lines in there. And so here we have a little rough print. And so I use my little sander tools to sand it down. And you definitely want to wear a respirator for this part because you don't want to breathe in those little particles. That can be dangerous. I want to give it a little wipe down because there's still a lot of little dust particles all over it. So I wiped it down with some IPA isopropyl alcohol and now it's ready to paint so I'm going to share with you that I, I didn't just print this one I printed a second one too I really liked how this turned out but I thought I can push this a little bit further and make it better so I went back to my shaper 3d app and I made a little splash pan that will actually separate and come apart. I, I raised up the wheel head just so that it, it fits and I made sure it all fit together. And here it is, here's the print. I printed it a little bit bigger this time in a 1 12th scale. And here was the first version of the splash pan that I made and I thought that was great. But then I realized 
that splash pan wasn't exactly what I wanted. So here are three versions I made. This was the first one. It fit together okay, but I realized that it wasn't really hooking onto there. So toss that aside. And then I found this and I realized, oh, I forgot to make that level. So it really wasn't really hooking either. So got rid of that one too. Then I finally made enough adjustments. Everything fit together so nice and it was perfect. I was so excited. <laughs> the best a little splash pan. So we have a winner here. I want to make more of these, but back to the other one. So I start with this acrylic paint. It is a metal paint. It kind of smells, so you might want to do this in a well-ventilated area. And I gave each piece three coats. Then I had to do some color mixing. So I mixed some orange and yellow and some off-white together just to get this kind of yellow-orange color that they use on their wheels and it took quite a bit of kind of playing around with it so then I added a bunch of yellow to it and it got real close so then I had I knew I had it I just put more yellow and just a tiny bit of the darker mixture just to lighten it up a little bit kept adding more dark mixture until I got the right color I painted the rest black and let it dry. So here are my pieces and I left a little spot on the bottom for some glue. Yes, that turned out so nice. So I'm just using some Gem Tac permanent glue and piecing it together. How nice and then I took out some black cord and I'm just going to glue that in with the gem tack glue right inside of the little petal and let that dry I printed off little tiny versions I made of what of the decals that go on top of the Brent pottery wheel and just glued those into place it's just that nice little extra detail. And then I forgot to paint this part silver, so I went back in with just a little bit of silver. And then I cut the cord to size. And I glued it to the bottom with some super glue. Then I found my melty beads and I decided I will melt one into the shape of a plug. And then I added two little wires at the end. And then I just glued my little strip of cord right into that and then I had a little plug. And then I took this polycrylic to give the whole thing a nice protective finish. And that gives it a, a nice shine, like the shiny plastic of the pottery wheel. And there we have a Brent pottery wheel in miniature. Look how cute. Fits right in my hand. And then it looked really great in my little tiny studio I've been working on. Look how it fits right in. Now, stay tuned for some outtakes. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.